I don't own a debit card. I've never owned one. I've never allowed my three sons to possess one. Certainly and truly the worst financial tool ever given to the American consumer. So a long time ago, I asked myself a simple question. How would I remove 99.9% .9 of my personal liability like that? So I use the safest form of payment that exists on the face of the earth, and that is a credit card. Credit card. Not debit credit, but credit card. Every day of my life, I spend their money. I don't spend my money. My money sits in a money market account. It earns interest. If I pay the bill in full or part of the bill, my credit score goes up. So I'm building credit while I'm using that credit card. But if tomorrow someone gets my card number and charges $1 million on my credit card by federal law, my liability is zero. I have no liability. So why are you still using a debit card? No, I mean, that's a real question. <laughs> Because if we're being honest, you could be going on that trip. You could be in Turks. You could be in Mexico. You could be on somebody's beach. You could be going to see the Eiffel Tower. Like, basically, the banks don't want you to know. These debit cards don't want you to know. These banks don't want you to know that you could really be, you could really be traveling for free. You could be getting some free money back from the things that you buy already on a daily basis. If you're new here, it's me, Georgia B. Welcome to my channel. Today, I just want to discuss with you guys some important things that you should know on why you shouldn't be using a debit card and instead be using a credit card, how you can make that happen. The thing is we're spending this money already every single month. We have a list of bills that we have to pay every single month. If you knew that you could take a credit card, pay off whatever bills that do allow you to pay with the credit card. I understand some bills don't allow you to pay with the credit card, but majority of them do. When you pay with the credit card, you're going to be able to get certain things from these credit card companies, right? Including points to fly, points for hotels, rental cars, money back, right? That you can cash out and just pay back towards your bill. There's so many options available and plus so many more benefits, except for just the points and things like that. I was with the real estate office a few years ago and I remember talking to one of my team leaders and she told me like, you need to get a credit card. She told me you need to buy everything on the credit card. And then she said, pay everything off at the end of the month. And I remember her breaking it down to me in a way that just, it sounded so smart and so easy. And the thing is, you always want to learn from people who are doing, you know, bigger and better things than you, because that's how you can grow. That's how you get to their level. And so I just want to share that with you guys. And pretty much what she pretty much said and what I explained is that when you buy these things with your credit card, instead of your debit card because your debit card majority of debit cards only very few debit cards have perks but the perks are nowhere equivalent to what's offered with credit cards so number one is going to be the perks and rewards and things like that this video is not sponsored in any way there's a lot of banks that have this right this is just one i wanted to give you guys an example of chase sapphire prefer card i guess it has a 95 dollars annual fee with the benefits that you're getting for it it's very worth it right? after you spend four thousand dollars on purchases in the first three months if you're living in the United States, majority of your bills, they're going to amount to 4000 within three months. So let's say you pay off your bills with your credit card within a three month period, which is $4,000 or more. So basically you will be able to get $1,000 in rewards or points, but that's a thousand US dollars. So you can put that towards, you can put that towards a flight, you can put that towards a trip. So there are going to be credit cards that are going to be for travel specifically that every time you swipe your card, your credit card, you're going to get points towards a flight or something like that. They also have credit cards where you can get global entry. I know there's a Chase card that does that and there's an American Express credit card that does that. And they allow you to have global entry. So when you come back into the country, you can skip customs. And then they also have like TSA pre-checks that's included with the Chase credit card. Another one is you getting cash back. So let's say you go to the grocery store, you buy groceries or you get gas and these different type of things. Basically from things you already have to buy anyway you're able to get money back for that so I just wanted to show you guys that as, as an example discover has a cashback credit card and this one you earn five percent cash back on everyday purchases so just like I was speaking about amazon.com which is we love amazon like amazon me please like we love amazon so um amazon grocery stores restaurants gas stations like tell me Tell me a debit card that does all this and plus one that does for travel. 
you know, I feel like there's so many benefits to this. This is just the tip of the iceberg, right? So just speaking of the rewards, the benefits, all of those things, depending on the bank, um, and depending on the credit card, it really varies. They have travel credit cards, for example. They have this Southwest Rapid Rewards credit card. And so you earn $50,000 bonus points after you spend $1,000. So this is just $1,000 in the first three months. So as long as you spend $1,000 within the, within three months of getting the card, you get 50,000 bonus points. So obviously this is with Southwest. So you would want to obviously be a fan of Southwest if you decided to do that. They have one here for United. Um, like I said, there's so many cards that are available. Um, and then also they tell you like the reward rate. So one to two miles per every $1 spent. And so guys, I mean, like, I don't know how else to kind of tell you. And I don't want to ramble too long about that. The next one is going to be debit card fraud. Have you ever seen a charge that wasn't your charge or you wanted to dispute a charge? Pretty much with a credit card, your money is protected way better. You don't have to go through a lot of the confusion that they require you to go through when it comes to like a debit card. A lot of the times you're able to dispute things quick and easy. You don't have to, you know, go through the whole, um, oh, fill out the paperwork, do this and that, things like that. It's going to be an easier process. Credit card money is the bank's money. They're always going to protect themselves to the utmost to make sure that their money is protected, hence the money that you're borrowing to pay back every month. When you use debit cards, you're not improving your credit score. Debit cards don't report to credit bureaus. And in order to continue to build a strong credit profile, you want to use credit cards, right? Because this can help us get you know, benefits when it comes to, you know, buying homes and maybe getting cars and better interest rates and things like that. So the benefit of a credit card is that every month when you use that credit card, they are reporting to credit bureaus in order to continue to build up your credit. And I want to mention this since I'm on this portion is that the idea and from what I said in the beginning is that, okay, you want to pay whatever bills allow you to pay your bills with your credit card. Once you do that and you're paying off your card every month, I recommend never pay your bills to zero. This is what I was told by a mortgage lender. Remember, I'm a real estate agent. In order to boost your credit score, you never want to pay it to zero. You want to pay it to about $20, $15, or whatever like the minimum payment will be. So let's say 20, 20 to $30. And you want to leave it at that balance. And then let's say you don't use it for the next month and you would just pay that balance off. But what that helps is that it helps to boost your credit score even higher. When you pay it to zero, it doesn't boost your score as high. Why? I don't know. This is what I was taught by a loan officer with a mortgage company when you're trying to boost your credit score. Just a little tip for you guys on paying off your credit card every month. But remember, this is going to be reporting to the credit bureau. So in addition to all the benefits that I mentioned already, plus you're getting a better credit score, which is like, a win is a win. A win is a win, okay? The next reason why I would say debit cards are a no-no, only if you have to, is just because hold and deposit. So I know if you guys ever went to a hotel or rented a car, they ask you for a credit card or a debit card. And the difference is when you give them a debit card, they're gonna put an extra hold on your money, right? So let's say the charge is $100. They might say, we're gonna put a hold on an additional $100 until you return it just for any accidentals. With credit cards, if you realize they don't put holds on the extra money because it's a credit card. If there are any accidentals, they're basically banking on it being a credit card and there being money behind that in order to get paid. Right? I would say another benefit is with credit cards, you don't have to worry about the holds and those extra deposits that are required when you use a debit card. This is nowhere near anything that you would get with the debit card. Make sure you shop around for your credit cards. Make sure if you have any questions, call them, ask them. Another thing I did want to mention, if you think like, oh, my bills are $2,000, but I have a $1,000 credit limit, then what I would recommend is just pay whatever you can on the credit card, pay the rest cash, pay off the credit card every month. Do that consistently for about three to six months, because remember, they're gonna be reporting to the Business Credit Bureau. Once you pay it off, uh, once you pay off the credit card to the low balance of about $20, once you do that for about three months, if they have not sent you already a credit limit increase automatically, I would recommend calling the bank and letting them know, you know, you've been paying it, you've been paying off your credit card 
every month and you want to request a credit limit increase. If they ask you why, just tell them you really enjoy this bank and you'd rather get a credit limit increase with them instead of using somebody else. Don't say I never told you nothing. And then once you do that, nine times out of 10, if you've been showing good history, they're gonna increase it. If for some reason they don't, they will tell you why, but nine times out of 10, they're gonna give you a credit limit increase and then that way you can put all your bills, which means more perks. And then as you continue to grow with the bank, they're gonna offer you better products. They're gonna offer you maybe a better credit card. So, you know, don't be discouraged if you're not exactly where you wanna be, right? We're, we've all been in that position. So just start with what you have, where you are, and then go from there. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me down below. I appreciate you guys. Make sure you check out this video. I think you might like it and I will see you there. I love you guys and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.